Hi, everyone. I'm Colleen Benelli here with Robin Benelli, my daughter. And we are so excited today to be here with Yolanda Williams. She is also with the Energetic Alchemist. That is her, her business name and social name. We'll talk about that again in a minute. But she's also the host of Reiki Radio Podcast. So I'm sure that many of you have listened to her. So we are just excited to have you join us and share your wealth of knowledge and perspectives of Reiki. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited <laughs> for this conversation. Me too. Yeah. It's, it's so much fun. Aren't the podcasts just the best? They are the best because I think it's rare nowadays that you get to sit down and just converse with people and not have the distraction of devices and just everything else. So it's actually one of my favorite things to be a part of, but also to listen to. Um, it's a better option than some of the other things that are out there. Yeah. Right. That's kind of what we were just saying to Yolanda. It is, it's, it's even outside of the distractions too. It's also nice because you don't really get to, it's not always common that we get to sit down and have long form conversations with each yes. other. And I think that's so important in this community because we can all learn so much from each other and, um, you know, just, builds bridges and brings people together. And you learn so much from everybody else's perspectives. You really do. And I have to say, um, recently I was driving, listening to one of your podcasts, and it was someone that I have spoken with several times, someone I've even interviewed and have been interviewed by. But listening to her on your podcast, heard completely new information about her. And it was just an amazing, um, I love the storytelling of it all and getting to know all of our different backgrounds and how Reiki really unifies us, but such interesting stories. So I do appreciate it. Yeah, I love that point. Because we all have that? different questions. Yeah, yes, we all have different yeah. questions and perspectives. Who were you, who were you it, listening with? It was Natalie. Oh, Natalie, Natalie Jasper, yeah. yes. And um yeah, I was so surprised by a lot of what she shared in her story. It was a beautiful, beautiful story. Absolutely. And yeah. speaking of that one, we've been guests on podcasts together, too. I learn new things that Robin shares. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, so, so interesting. And yes. just so fun, again, building community. I think that's so important in today's world. It is. Yeah. We're building community, connecting with one another, finding all of our, you know, the unity within us and the commonalities and all the diversity. It's it's just, and then, you know, we were just talking, um, we told you with Nicholas Pearson, and we were just talking about how through all of it, it goes into the heart of Reiki within us. Yes. It is the same. Yeah. I love Nicholas too. I can't wait to hear what you all discuss with him as well. Yeah. Great people. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. good. So and it's really cool. We get to make these connections and really truly develop these friendships. And so many of us have never met in person, but just through the podcasting and other um, events and gatherings that we get to know each other this way is incredible. Well, and also the development of global communication. Yes. Yes. And that we're in the infancy. And, you know, Yolanda, I'm sure you have this experience too, but I really, I really feel like we contribute wellness into these spaces and the energy of it for the people, but also the energetics of it. Yeah. I really feel as if contributing to these higher frequencies in the energy streams of podcasting, the innovation, the global communication, yeah. that it, it matters. It does. It does. And it's nice that it gives people more options as well, because there's so many people who end up taking Reiki classes or may have heard about it, but they may not know yet of a local community. And so just the fact that people have a way to find resources and again, get to know people, connect with people so you can build and be a part of community no matter where you are 
it's amazing now because that it wasn't that way not too long ago. I remember when I started, it was not that way. So it's amazing to see now how many resources are available. And accessible too. Yes. You yes. know, that's another thing is that it, it can be accessible. And like you said, you do feel like we we know each other because we do. Yeah. We you know, we're sitting on Zoom and we're seeing each other face to face and we're spending time together. But then when we do see each other in person, we're like, I know you. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. But yeah, that people can, like you said, have community, be a part of community from all across the world in different ways. People can just join from their cell phone, which most right. people now at this point, um, yeah. that that is such a huge piece of it as well. Yeah. When you say that, it reminds me of um, several years ago. It's actually how I met one of my teachers. So I was podcasting at the time and um, it's Franz, Franz Steiner. And he had written a book at that time. He has several, of course, but uh, his publisher reached out to me to interview him. And it was the first time I had heard of him. I had never heard of his work. And they sent me a copy of the book and I was, my mind was just blown. I loved it so much. And that's how I met him was being able to interview him in the podcast. And then of course, when he came to California after that, I attended his classes. And then every year when he comes, I always, you know, go and resit the class. But yeah, I've had amazing connections through this medium. Yeah. Same here. And that's mm -hmm. the same thing. He's another one too, that, I knew of and I knew of his books and I'd read some of it and you see it in social media, but then yeah. getting to actually meet somebody and talk with them and just, I think I, I just find so much of it again is all of us care so deeply yeah. about contributing wellness, creating community, and we may have some different styles of practices and things like that, that we do differently with techniques but the energy of it is there. The caring yeah. is there. The heart of it is there. That's one of the things that's most interesting to me too, Colleen, to be honest, because um, I have studied with various lineages and, you know, um, teachers of different traditions, not just Reiki, but even within the Reiki community, I have studied with um, different lineages. And I think it's fascinating that we have so many ways of the same expression. And, you know, sometimes people can be a little rigid about which way is the right way and these sorts of things. But I always say from the experience of training with different teachers and learning about different uh, points of view, and the variations are slight. I mean, it's not like these huge <laughs> differences that, you know, you're like, that came out of left field. Um, but it, I think it just gives you a wider perspective and understanding to be able to view Reiki from all of these different angles. So I love that we have so many different options and whatever calls to someone, there's like, you know, something for everyone. And I think it's beautiful that even in the community, we have that freedom to practice in different ways. Well, and through it all, they all work. Right. That part <laughs> too. But, but in the end of it all, even even in some of the differences and that can be controversial. Yes. It it still it all works. It does. And, and so it's an Reiki off. Reiki energy is outside of dogma, right? That's the other right. thing. But and I don't mean to call any other practices dogmatic. I don't mean it that way, but it's yeah. it's Reiki energy. That right. that piece of it is completely universal. Yeah. You know, it's like we're all tapping into Reiki energy. It's not like you know, uh, in the different lineages, the Reiki energy is different. The Reiki energy is the same. Right. So it is, um, that's, I think, such the neat part of it, too, is that, like you said, it's just different points of access, different ways that help us feel connected. But none of that changes what Reiki energy actually is. No, no. And I think that's a really important thing for people to know, especially people who well, not even just people who are new, but even people who have been practicing for a long time, because we have perhaps a lot of different stories, ideas, beliefs that can be very limiting in the way that we see or accept people that may practice differently. Or, you know, there's a lot of stories within the community around these things. And it's one of the things I am very adamant about speaking about, making sure that we're never 
um, too rigid. It seems to go against the practices to me, like to make sure that we're not judging each other or saying, um, you know, I'm right, you're wrong and all of this, um, but really making sure we never lose sight of the true essence of Reiki itself. And then again, have an appreciation for the variety and being curious about what can I learn from you and your lens and oh, in your class, you learned something I've never heard of. That's really cool too, right? So I I really do try to emphasize that because I get a lot of emails with people questioning and asking like, what is true? What is right? What's the best? You know, And I always say, go with what you feel called to, but it's all Reiki. Yeah. What's right for you is right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Right. Well, and, and it's one of the things I think we talk about so much in, even as talking about the um, shifts in ability of global communication, as I think the biggest picture of it all is that we are moving from the outside authority to the inside authority, the yeah. age of the outside authority and into the age of the inner authority and and that that is specifically what reiki is helping us do yeah let's get to what what is that truth within me and then also like you say you find different people different communities that are in alignment with that and the, in reiki specifically the different lineages etc but um and which one is is a match and like you, I wanted to try a lot of them. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And also, when I first learned Reiki in 2000, I learned a very strict style of, of Reiki. And yeah. it did actually have dogma. And for me, that was always like intuitively just, I loved the energy. I loved the results. <clears throat> but I, I really struggled with some of those very strict rules. And not so much because they were rules. It was because if I wasn't doing it that way, I was doing it wrong. Mm. And that was the piece of it. Yeah. For me, it was like, there's so many right ways. Let's go into what are the right ways for you individually. And so then as, as I got to practice later, discovering, you know, with future trainings and studying with William Rand in 2003, and finding out that the rules I had been taught actually didn't have a historical basis mm. and that Yusui didn't practice them. And even where I thought they came from Mrs. Takata, they didn't even come from her. So they just developed after she passed and through the 20 years from her to when I received it. So then it was right after that, being able to find the you know, that intuitive side, um, because the other piece of it was, I mean, I was taught a spiritual style, but it wasn't very, like very spiritual in, in a lot of ways, the way that was natural for me. Yeah. It's interesting. I think I had kind of the reverse. So my first training wasn't very traditional, but I didn't know that. I mean, I, I didn't, know anything about Reiki. Honestly, there was, a, <laughs> I worked in finance and I was going through um, a layoff. Well, I had already gone through it and I was trying to decide how I wanted to move forward in my life. And at the time I was in my early thirties and I didn't want to go back into that kind of a stressful environment. I recognized I was way too stressed for, you know, my well-being, but I wasn't familiar with Reiki meditation, any of these things, but I was familiar with astrology and um, I found myself really anxious about what direction I was going to go in my life because I wanted to make a pivot and I didn't know what that would look like. And then of course you have that background concern of you have responsibilities, you have things you have to take care of. So does that limit you and what you think you have to do? So I was imploding and I went to go see an astrologer that I'd seen before. And she read my chart and she told me all of these things about myself. And I was like, this lady, I don't know what she's talking about. Like she told me, um, uh, I could see auras. I was like, I don't even know what an aura is. And 
she told me that I would do really well with working in hospice because of my nature. She said, you would do really well with helping people cross over. I was like, there is no way that I know. <laughs> and the funny thing is, though, that the most, uh, a lot of my family work in death. So my mother and my father were both embalmers. My brother to this day is still an embalmer. My mother's father was a funeral director and my stepfather was the chief medical examiner of San Diego. So I, I wasn't like schemish about it, but I didn't think it sounded like a great idea to help people cross over. I just, I didn't understand any of that. And <laughs> fast forward, um, Somewhere in the conversation, she started telling me, well, at the very least, if you work on the anxiety portion, you'll have clarity about what direction you really want to go. And that's all I really wanted. But she said, learn how to meditate, sign up for a meditation class, and you should go have a Reiki session. And I had never heard of Reiki at the time. So I went home and I Googled meditation Reiki. I signed up for a meditation class right away. And then Reiki, I read about it, and it just sounded so strange. And I'm an Aquarius, my Aquarian nature. I was like, what is this? It's so weird. So instead of signing up for a session, I signed up for a class because I was like, I really want to know what this is. And um, so anyway, my first training, it wasn't necessarily what we would call traditional, but again, I didn't know that. And I loved it. I was so curious, but it made me more curious about what else is there to this thing called Reiki, right? So I Google and I found different types of teachers. And at some point I realized for me, I needed to understand what was really at the foundation. So I did end up studying with like more traditional and um, I even did Jikin and Reiki with Frank Arjava Petter and that was beautiful because in his classes, I had learned a lot about the origins and the foundation of the system that I hadn't learned in other classes. So that was great. And then, as I mentioned before, I also met Franz along the way. And what I loved about his style was it was traditional, but he also has this freedom Mm -hmm. And somewhere in there, I also trained with William Rand. And I also trained with you at some point. You came to San Diego. Like I was really seeking. And so I think that's what even gave me the lens of understanding. You have to use your own discernment. And you can appreciate what each teacher helps you to understand or see. But you don't have to limit yourself by the ideas or thoughts of your teachers. And so... That's really what has helped me on my path. And um, it's what I try to share with people. Like even if you train with me, I always say, take what resonates with you, leave the rest and keep exploring, keep going towards what calls to you. So that's how I got here. Not that you asked. <laughs> well, I meant to ask. Yeah, we were going to. Yeah. Tell us, tell us your story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. That is fascinating about the hospice piece too. Do you mm -hmm. do that work with Reiki now? No. So interestingly, um, back when I did train with um, William, I went to Seattle to do a Karuna Reiki master and the Yusui Tibetan master level. This was prior to Holy Fire. It didn't ex exist yet. And um, when I got out of that training, I got a call from my mother that my stepfather was in the hospital. And they, at the time, they lived in Asheville, North Carolina. So straight from training, I went straight to North Carolina. Well, some things happened, and unexpectedly, he just started to decline. So he basically went in for something that was supposed to be a checkup. And a lot of things happened, and they ended up in hospice care. And so where I thought I was going for a week, I ended up being there for about a month. He passed away while I was there. So he was in the hospital for the first few days I was there, and then they brought him into hospice, but at home. And so when he passed away, I was there. And it was the first time I had ever been present for someone passing away. And it was honestly one of the most beautiful experiences in that you can tell and feel the fear 
that someone is holding and to know that you can create space to try your best to make them feel safe and surrounded by love. And just watching my mother and the way that she was caring for him and nurturing him and speaking to him, just the love and the calmness that she had. That's where I really understood the beauty of that work. Like people who choose to do end of life doula work and these kinds of things. So yeah, after that experience, I realized, I think that's an absolute honor and a gift to be able to hold that space. Um, I haven't done it since, but I'm glad that I had that experience. Well, and it was for that time. Yeah. 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 Mine was kind of similar with that. I received Reiki and, and um, I received it because my horse told me I needed to receive Reiki. And, and so I ended up, it's a whole long story, but I ended up doing that. And then my father passed away within months, about two months of my master training. And that was really my first experience with it too, at the end of life. And and the actual dying process. Um, And what was interesting with it, for me, it was a really beautiful experience. And then one of my family members that was there said, oh, that was just terrible. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, how interesting of the perspectives. Right. For me, um, being really, it was midwifing. Mm -hmm. We were midwifing them. And the family and able to just hold that light, even though I had no idea what I was doing. I, yeah. You know, I was months into that ability and and really the first person that had passed um, in that way, you know, that I experienced. Yeah. yeah. It is incredible. It is. It is very interesting. And it made me question. I remember after that, I went through this whole period of kind of so curious about the way culturally we view death and our approach to it, um, just the way that we perceive it, you know, and the ways that we understand it versus the ways that some other cultures may view it and understand it. So it definitely did uh, give me a different view and perspective and a curiosity around just what a sacred space that is when someone is going through that path of transitioning. Yeah. I I agree. And, and the same thing for me, I was a lot younger at the time. And it the same thing for me, it, it took me into that journey of what is this? And how, how is this? And, um, and I was so grateful to have Reiki yeah. to give me that broader perspective, and help people with that fear. Like you say, in other cultures, often, they have a much more clear um pathway of actually leaving their body yeah and in our culture there's so many varieties of beliefs around it or people are unsure and not know you know Mm -hmm. what they believe and what they what they know and so that fear can be there and this helps them Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. And helps us too. Yeah. As the ones that are going through, you know, the grief side of losing someone so close to us. I I say a lot, these practices are what supported me so much because during COVID, um, during that whole between like twenty twenty, yeah, twenty twenty to twenty twenty one. 22 I lost three friends back to back and none of them were COVID related but three of them passed and it was definitely this work and these tools that helped me stay grounded and work through whatever layers of emotion and those kinds of things I was feeling but the other thing I realized far after uh, my stepfather had passed away and I thought about what the astrologer had said to me because I also ended up studying astrology amongst so many other things. <laughs> Reiki just kind of like opened you up to curiosity about everything. Um, but I have Scorpio on my midheaven. So I knew that was in part of why she said what she said. And I realized through this work, what I really do enjoy is helping people go through that, you know, like our death cycles while we're alive, like that transformation, those deep level transformations, and not being afraid of the healing process and really honoring 
the parts of it that are incredible and the parts that are so uncomfortable and seeing the beauty of what we're learning and exposing ourselves to through the change of our minds and our bodies and our emotions. So Reiki uh, really did highlight that for me of how much I love helping people and working even myself through the process of transformation. That's really interesting. While living. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that process yeah. is also a, a, a level of midwifing, right? Because yes. you are supporting them from the old into the new. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that um, it can be messy and hard and all of yes. this. You were a different person from before and after, like you said, yeah. that, that death and rebirth cycle, the transformation or the, the tower card, you know, those yes. kind of, uh, concepts within within our life cycles that I don't think many of us can avoid, you know, no. because we life is dual and we have the challenging pieces and endings and new beginnings. And and we have several of them. That was the other thing too. I think when I came into this work, I heard a lot about just the sunshine and rainbows part. Like, Oh, it's so incredible. And it is. I mean, listen, when I first came in, I was, astounded by like wow the feeling the sensation of energy and it being something that actually helped me understand aspects of myself that I was uncomfortable with growing up so you know hindsight I was very sensitive to energy and I was very much like the friend who would be like I don't want to be here because I just didn't like the feel of the environment or I would meet people and I would shut down and my friends would be like, don't be rude. And I'm like, mm. I just had funny feelings, but I didn't know how to translate it all. So Reiki helped me also understand those layers and those aspects of myself. But then when I first came in, I heard about it being incredible. And again, amazing. We could have like 10 days of stories, right? Um, but what also started to happen is I was very diligent in my practice because I was fascinated every day. I'm practicing, laying my hands, meditating, all the things. And then emotions started to erupt. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I'm having this awareness of like things that I've been holding that just weren't in my conscious awareness. And it's like, what is happening? It was definitely like this tower card moment. I felt like I was falling apart, but no one told me this was going to happen. And that was part of what inspired the podcast because I thought like, okay, uh, I can't be the only person going through this. There has to be someone else. But there was also a part of me that knew this is part of healing because it was uncomfortable, but I really, really understood like, wow, I can't sweep this under the rug. This is coming up for a reason. I have to, it's helping me to understand even different parts of myself and why for example, I've claimed to be an introvert all of my life. Am I really? No, it was these life experiences that caused me to behave as one, right? And so I started Reiki Radio to have these conversations. Like, I don't know if anyone will listen to this, but if anyone else is having um, moments of discomfort in the healing process, or if anyone else is questioning if they were doing it right, it's like, maybe if I share and talk about it, then other people will know like, no, 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 let's be in this together. And this is just part of the process. And it's beautiful, even again, in the uncomfortable parts. Yeah, such a well, translation of, of your, your um, I guess, aptitude or purpose with that, that uh, transformation and helping people through it that this is the the way it's showing up for you yeah. and the way because those life transitions are are so big for people and to manage and to manage thoughtfully with consciousness even when it's really hard even yeah. when you're not thoughtful and conscious you know yeah. and those things that happen with all of it cuz we're human and and that's the way it is but it sounds then like in your history, um, you went from being in finance, seeing the astrologer, and then this experience. How did that unfold afterwards? And uh, maybe the story too about the energetic alchemist. What 
Yeah. What is that? <laughs> it's so all tied together. It does. It, I again, I, I had just wanted to stop having anxiety. I didn't expect my path to look anything like it does now. Um, but because I was practicing every day and I was very excited about what I was experiencing with Reiki and all of these things. So I started practicing on my friends, like anyone who would let me lay my hands on them. I was like, come over, let me just, let me just me want to practice. <laughs> like I just want to try. And then my family is all 3000 miles away. So I had, you know, practice for remote sessions as well. So it was always, you know, I was just practicing. Well, what happened uh, that I wasn't expecting is my friends started referring people to me. And then, mm -hmm. you know, so I started having sessions and building a clientele base. And then people started asking, well, will you teach? And although I had already completed more than one master level training, I had no intention of teaching. Uh, and then one day I finally said yes. And so that was the start of this becoming my life's work that I didn't see coming um, kind of thing. But then with Reiki, a lot of things shift and change in us. And like I said, I had experiences growing up where, you know, hindsight, I was just very sensitive to energy. I was very intuitive and didn't understand it. And as I was practicing Reiki, I started having very interesting experiences. Like people would be on the table and I have these flashes of all kinds of pictures and stories, or um, I would feel things that I didn't quite understand. But because I knew some of these people, I felt comfortable in saying, this is what I saw, this is what I felt, and it made sense to them. So then that made me realize, okay, <laughs> maybe of all this energy work and clearing my energy channels, I'm becoming more intuitive, but I don't understand how to translate what I'm sensing and perceiving. So then that caused me to pursue that. So I still practice Reiki, but then I redirected my attention to, I need to understand how to translate the unseen. And part of why I think growing up, I was so afraid and uncomfortable with sensation or like having the sympathetic nature that we all talk about is because I didn't understand what I was feeling. And a lot of times when things are unknown, we just throw it in the box of scary and uncomfortable. So I did a deep dive into um, intuitive work. I did psychic development classes. I <laughs> learned how to read the Akashic records. I learned how to read tarot and oracle cards, like anything that had to do with intuitive development, I was there. And that supported me a lot, not just in my practice, but another layer of self-acceptance and I started recognizing we are incredible. Like, I mean, just starting to really pay attention to being human is wild. Right? <laughs> like we have all of these abilities. We have these uh, abilities on a physical level, our physical sensory, like all oh, the best food, the best music, just looking at nature, all of these things, incredible. But then we have this non-physical sensory where we can literally feel each other and we can feel and sense the essence of an environment. And then adding on the layer that we're so malleable, our minds and our emotions, our energy, that we could be affected by each other. So I could be fine. Someone walks in the room angry. And then all of a sudden, I feel that and I take it on. And now I'm disturbed, but unconsciously don't even recognize it, just start matching those energies. So then I got more curious about, well, how do I manage me, <laughs> right? So going back into this whole deep dive into Reiki of, okay, how do I stay with a sturdy mind, return to even like what the Gokai is telling me and pointing to, go back to what these symbols are telling me and pointing me to. And I just became very curious about what we're capable of and the true nature of our design and that we can manage ourselves, but we're also constantly manipulating and shifting and affecting everything around us, all of us. So I was like, well, I'm just fascinated with energy. So Reiki is my love, but there's an idea and a concept around what that is as a teaching, as a system. And the system is brilliant to me. 
but I also am just wider scope, so interested in energy itself and the role that we play in connection to all of this. So that's where the idea for the energetic alchemist came from because I started studying many things and I wasn't just practicing Reiki. I started practicing all kinds of things, although I don't necessarily um, offer services to reflect everything that I've studied. I still have, you know, I've studied many things. So that's where I came up with that label just to not box me in. And I felt like it was more honest. So if anyone was working with me, they would know that while the system of Reiki is at the foundation of all that I do, it is likely that you're going to be exposed to other things as well. I would say we use Reiki to explore our spirituality. Yeah. So like you say, it's it's at the foundation and it is a big part of our practice and you know maybe even the main part of our practice right. but all of these other things are it, it influences it because at the top level it's all energy yeah it's like to me it's all again just like we talked about originally how do we all, how do we get there right yes. how do, <laughs> and people are going to explore their spirituality and these spiritual concepts from other points of view, other right. perspectives completely outside of Reiki. Right. And we get to a similar message at the top, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so it is, it's amazing to um, experience the different qualities that different practices have. And then how does that work within also with Reiki, you know, yeah. because it's all so to me, it's, it's different colors of the rainbow almost, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. And to that point, that's why I love this work so much because it really doesn't end, you know? And I think I, even I, when I first started, I was so curious and so like, oh, I just wanted to eat up everything that was Reiki. And it was like, oh, I got to get to master level. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do all these things. Um, but I think I saw those as just like goal post, And I thought it was the end of like the accomplishment within the Reiki journey. And I didn't really realize initially that, no, 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 <laughs> hold on. This goes way beyond just your classes. Like the classes give you the foundations, the tools, the understanding, but you have to do the work. And as you keep developing and as you keep practicing, you are just infinitely in the cycle of change and development and shifting. And what you believe today or what you understand today may have some difference in texture or expansion tomorrow. So for me, that's another thing of why, you know, some people say, wow, you've been, you know, like even the podcast, like, oh, why did you do so long? I can't believe you've done it that long. And I'm like, what? You could talk about this stuff forever. <laughs> and from different lenses, different people's backgrounds, different practices, and all of the things, it's just, it's incredible because to your point, even though we're all having the experience of this divine intelligence, this life force intelligence, it's going to activate and reveal so much to us individually. And where we choose to go with it is up to us. And yeah, so I don't know. I just think it is the most amazing thing. And it's one of those things I'm like, just at base level, can you imagine if we all got to learn this at like a young age, just at a foundation? of having more understanding about our design and how much of a hand we do have in relationship to our feelings and our thought processes and how we feel around people and our choice and all of it. I mean, it's just, it's life-changing. So it is definitely a practice that I believe is beneficial to anyone, whether you decide to be a practitioner or not. I feel like Reiki is the best companion for each of us just as a human just to have more understanding of yourself. You're on mute, Robin. <laughs> and as you started, sorry, I'm having to do that. I have a cold, so I'm having to do that from time to time. So you don't hear my sniffling. And as you said, even if we're just starting in our self-meditation or self-reiki practice right. and what unfolds from there as the, the old is being let go of to make space for the new. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I love that you said, Yolanda, that we tell our students is that in at first you're like okay 
I just want to get to the end. I just yeah. want to get there. I just want to get there. And then somewhere along the line, you realize that there is no end. <laughs> and you might even be like, ah, oh. but then you you eventually get excited about that because it means yeah. that, wait, I'm going to still grow and evolve and learn and practice and all of those like really beautiful pieces that yeah. are part of these practices that it's like, oh, there's Colleen says, even at my age, there's still <laughs> more. <laughs> I'm so I'm so fascinated every day, every day. And yeah. you would think, I mean, it's been, I started really in, um, well, I mean, a whole lifetime, but in my kind of formal training with energy in shamanism in 1997. Wow. And every day I'm fascinated by it every day. Yeah. And the growth and development. And I think, oh, I'm going to get to know more. And I, yes. I don't even really, you know, it's not like, oh, I have an outcome or an expectation now. Now it's just like the the word you've used quite a bit is curiosity. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing for me is it just keeps my my curiosity stimulated and excited. And it doesn't always have to have an agenda or outcome. But I get to just like, you know, some of my favorite things to do is wander and wonder. Mm. walk around activate reiki wander around and wonder yeah and it's fascinating every day i'm the same and it's funny you say it makes me think of one of the things i think is so exciting and i'm sure you know better than both of us it has changed so much that conversation has grown and expanded so it's exciting to see now one how accessible reiki has become um, how now it is a little, it's more common where even if someone doesn't know exactly what Reiki is, they may have heard of it yeah. or the, the concept of energy healing isn't so taboo now, you yeah. know, just to even know that so many medical professionals are now being trained within the system of Reiki or that so many young people now, like when I see people so young studying and talking about Reiki and other systems, I'm like, gosh, I can't even imagine what that would have been like as a teenager to, you know, it's amazing to me to see how much effect it has really had culturally and globally at that. And also to your point, this one time, I had the pleasure of having a student who was 80 years old and it was her first introduction to Reiki. And she was just like, why did it take so long? my life to find this right but you know it's always perfect timing but just also that it's not limited to anything not an age group not a culture not a religion nothing like i have students who are very active in their churches like whatever you know religion they're a part of so just the fact that it is um even so open to everyone and people feel very called to the beauty of it is i mean that's inspiring because i think we're re literally seeing the world change before our eyes in some of the most beautiful ways even though like on the news we see it looks like it's all bad but if you really look at what's going on within this community in a broader scope there are so many beautiful changes that are happening at the same time well, in that global communication, we have have the ability to meet one another with an unlimited, I, well, I don't know if we're quite at the unlimited place, but mm -hmm. we have such a way to connect with each other. And, and I know it seems, you know, like a new thing, but even I love that, for instance, my grandson, who's I never know if he's 12 or 13. Sorry, <laughs> Kelvin. Anyway, you know, he plays video games with people around the world. They're mm -hmm. his friends. Yeah. Okay, well, who are you with? And, oh, I'm just with my friend. And so I love the way that we have this outreach now and how mainstream Reiki has become and is becoming even more so uh, definitely from the time that I learned it. Yeah. You know, I was 
we we <laughs> Robin and I did a podcast um years ago together and it was about uh growing up with alternative parents in a small <laughs> Oregon town <laughs> and so it, it it was it was rough sometimes and oh, really? that same thing where you know I was just like you talked about so excited I wanted to share it with everybody I'm chasing everybody with my hands like <laughs> I'll give you Reiki and Robin was a teenager so she's like oh mom because I would do it at her games with the other athletes her friends I'll give you Reiki she'd be like sit on your hands <laughs> I'm, being I'm being written on prayer lists give me a break <laughs> Some of the prayer list told them have, uh, have her name and like pray for her twice. Yes, that is funny. It's so yeah. funny because I remember when we first logged in and I was looking at you thinking like, wow, that must have been so interesting having a mother or being raised with someone that was into like this whole alternative world of um, spirituality and understanding. But yeah, I guess years ago, that would have been much different than it is now. Yeah, and it was definitely, I mean, I'm so grateful, you know, and as you were talking earlier and, and how much it's had an effect on my life and my life purpose that I was in corporate too yeah. and finding that, oh, wait, this is a culturally created self that is, <laughs> yeah. and it's not, and I have a great respect for people who find so much um, within you know, their jobs and their careers and all of that. So it's not about that, but it certainly was not for me and getting yeah. into it and being super anxious and stressed and very unfulfilled and, you know, having to kind of make that choice of shifting, but how Reiki is here for our different, when you were talking about that evolution and age and also our different like cycles that bring mm -hmm. about these different changes, you know, from, being a child and then, you know, a young adult or like for me, the life cycle of being a parent right now and Colleen, I was thinking about you because my dad just retired and those life cycles, but then you have the life cycles of birth and death and relationships changing and, you know, all of these health, different health things, all of these big life cycle changes that also make us dive into different aspects of this work, exploration, understanding of ourselves, um, compassion, knowledge, wisdom, all of those things that I think many of us, you know, I don't think that this is true for every scenario and every situation that we go through, but many of us would not take back some of the challenging situations that we go through just because it made us who we are today. And, you know, it made us understand a greater level of compassion for ourself and for the world. And, um, and so that's the other piece of it is as we have these tools, as we have these modalities, as we have these practices to help us navigate the world, because it changes with each practice that we do, but then it changes with the reality of the world and, yeah. you know, what the world's going through, right. you know, like the difference between, three years ago, four years ago now, and now, and as you guys were talking about the accessibility and the global communication piece of it, I was thinking um, about Mary and Godwin and Kingsley that join us, that we have a distance Reiki share every Tuesday morning, and um, they join us from their phones, and they're, they're in Nigeria, wow. and they come every single week. And I just think like, how did you even originally find us? You know, <laughs> right. like it's just unbelievable. And they, there is a little community from their different friends and their Reiki community that, you know, will join us off and on. And then some of them are there kind of every, every week and how amazing that is because I was just like, I don't even know how you found us. <laughs> you yeah. know? Like, yeah. And we just love getting to have that communion with people from all over the world. And that's just an example because we do have people from all over the world, but, you know, like some of the people that are in maybe the UK, you can see the pathways for how they found us, you know, right. like, oh yeah, I learned from this person. And it's like, I just love that piece of when we have people come in from different parts of the world of like, like, how did this even happen? But because of this global communication, we are able to um, 
to to connect with each other. And I do feel like they're friends. You know, I do feel like, like you said, we get to have these this time with each other. And I feel like if we ever met in, in person, I would just, you know, give them a big hug. And I'm like, you're my friend. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I told Nicholas, Nicholas Pearson, I was like, you're my friend. I didn't yeah. even give him the choice because we had spoken so many times at some point. It was just like, we're BFF. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, with the global aspect, I mean, that's one of the cool things with the podcasting too, because when I first, I, so I started Reiki radio in 2013. And at that time I had never even listened to a podcast. I just didn't want to do a blog. <laughs> it was the other, only other option I found on Google. Um, but I remember seeing because you know you can see like different regions of the world where people are listening when you look in the whatever platform you use and my mind was blown one when I realized anyone even listened to it but then to start to see that people in other countries were listening I was like oh this is so crazy and just to know that people are tuning in and maybe laughing with you and you know nodding their head relating to you you may never even speak to them you may never have any clue. That's also interesting. Um, but I also got to be a part of the Reiki Rays Global Healing Summit the past few years. And that, again, I was like, gosh, there are people practicing and teaching everywhere, all over the world. And it, it's just, it's amazing to think there's this one practice, this one system that has brought us all into this similar interest. And you do meet people that perhaps you wouldn't have met in any other circumstance in life. And you do get to um, develop these long, long relationships that, again, you may never even see them in person. And it's such a beautiful thing. It's actually why um, in 2020, I started something called the Alchemy Circle. And fortunately, before that all happened, I was already playing with doing things online, um, working with people like, you know, online classes and these types of things. And so I decided when at the height of the pandemic, when we first found out everything was shutting down, I was like, okay, I need to do Reiki every day for my sanity. I've got to, because I don't know what is happening. The world is erupting. This is wild, right? So then I thought, well, maybe I'll invite people to join me for this daily practice. So I did something initially called Reiki May, and we were supposed to meet every morning through the month of May to just practice Reiki. And we did. And it was incredible. And we developed these friendships and connections. And while everything was erupting around us, we all had this space of just being in our practice and redirecting our mind and staying committed to whatever Reiki was for us individually. And that turned into the alchemy circle. So it is, um, I'm so thankful for all of the relationships that's brought into my life, how it changes me every day. And like for anyone listening, no matter where you are in the path, I mean, if you really just think and sit and reflect on what brought you into it and how much you've changed. I think that it can almost bring you to tears. <laughs> like just the gratitude for how much we grow and and what you said, the stages and cycles of life. I mean, my early 30s till now, I just turned 47 a couple of weeks ago. Ooh, changes. Yes. And <laughs> Reiki is like, I would never have guessed that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And but Reiki has been like such a support in navigating these cycles and changes of life as well. So yeah, it's very cool. And that's called the Alchemy Circle. The Alchemy Circle, yeah. So it's an online community. We work together in groups. We meet twice a week. And oh wow. Yeah. We explore all kinds of things in there now. Wow. Well, tell us something about, too, I know you created some oracle cards yes. and a couple of other things. Tell us about, tell us about your staff. Oh, uh, the oracle cards. Goodies. So this was so much fun. This, I, I, you could say, I still get excited about. Um, I told you there was a period where I really went in on learning intuitive development. And one of the first things I learned was to use oracle cards 
because they are a really great tool of helping us to translate what is coming through for us intuitively. So I fell in love with them. And then um, I finally got the courage to study tarot because, you know, there's so much stigma around tarot more so years ago. And I was like, I'm afraid. Uh, (laughs) So when I finally did study and learn, I fell in love with tarot. But the thing was, I won't tell you how many decks I have. I have a lot of Oracle decks <laughs> and I have a lot we of tarot have a decks. You, but not, you. not like so many, but I know. will not tell you under any circumstance, but I okay. love them. <laughs> I love them so much, like to the point where there are some that are just collector's items for me, right? So I love because there are different focal points with different decks, but then sometimes I just fall in love with the artwork. And again, they really help to activate that imaginative part of our minds. Like you can look at the image and all of a sudden you're in that space of envisioning and your intuition comes online and then here comes a story and it's a message for you. It's fascinating. So for years I wanted to create a deck and it was just one of those things where I thought, I don't know how I'll be able to do this because I myself am not an artist. I just knew what I wanted the cards to be and look like. And I didn't think I would even be able to afford to commission an artist, to be honest. And then years later, I finally, I said it to one of my friends, like, I really wish I could do this deck I've been wanting to do for years. And she recommended an artist. Now, this was 2019, right at the end of 2019, right before everything happened with COVID, right? So the woman, the artist lives in, Um, Pennsylvania. And at the time I was in San Diego. So I emailed her and said, I'm working on this deck. What would it be? Couldn't I commission you and, you know, all the back and forth. And so she said, yes, I would love to do this project. It would be amazing. She and I worked on this deck through email for an entire year. And I would email her the detail of every card. Like this is what's in the image. This is the ethnicity because I wanted it to be diverse. It's very diverse, the deck. These are the colors in the card. This is the symbolism in the card. Like So 74 cards in the deck. Yeah, can you and, hold them up? Yeah. And I wanted it to be um, very much for practitioners. So this deck looks, because I've been using it every day for over a year, but you can see Some of them are in full color. The full color ones are related to the major arcana in tarot. And then there are some, like this one is a chakra card. There are some that represent the realm of duality. They're just, oh, God, they're so beautiful. Oh, (laughs) they're so beautiful. I know. I'm like, oh, yeah. This card is similar to the Hierophant in tarot, but it's someone getting an attunement, as you can see, Mm -hmm. instead. Yeah. The elements up top. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun um, working on this deck with her. This is the third eye card. Uh, yeah. And uh, it took us a year. So just emailing back and forth. And um, <laughs> then when the images were done, I was like, oh, no, because then I had to write the guidebook to go with it. Right. So it comes with the guidebook. <laughs> yeah. And luckily, I have a friend who's a graphic artist who designed the box for me. So this is the box that the cards come in. Um, that um, If I knew um, how much work was going to go into this, I probably wouldn't have done it. But <laughs> luckily, it took a village and it finally, um, it was complete. But the really cool thing was the deck was printed and launched the end of last year. So it took three years to actually be fully done because, I mean, the world was upside down and I was traveling and it was a mess. But um when it was all said and done, I got to interview the artist and we were doing just like we're doing right now on Zoom. And it was the first time she and I had ever seen each other. And it was like just, yeah, it was so amazing. So I just want to say her name is Hilary Zozula. She's an incredible artist. And she really, I mean, blew my mind with the way that she was able to interpret what I described in emails and turn it into these beautiful works of art. So, yeah, so it's called the Energetic Alchemist Oracle. And you said, Yolanda, that she was on your podcast? 
too. Yes, I okay. interviewed her. Yeah, when the deck finally came out, and this is the back of the cards. They're also really thick. Um, the cardstock I wanted it to be very thick, so they're thicker than a traditional deck would be. But yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> they're they so are just beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Well, where do we get one? On my website. So my website is the only place you can order them. Um, the energeticalchemist.com. And again, there's 74 cards, but even the descriptions, it's really tailored to the work that we all do. So mm -hmm. I wanted these cards to be, some people still use them for divination and that's completely fine, of course, but I wanted a tool for us of how to understand these phases and cycles and experiences that we go through. So I wanted cards that spoke to our processes of energy healing, of transformation, the highs, the lows, the in-between, and how to navigate it. So all of the cards really point to different aspects of what it's like to be on these journeys. Yeah, I can I can really hear what you're saying with that, that it's it's um I don't know the whole theme of transformation right now too with Pluto moving into Aquarius. Yeah. How is that affecting you? With <laughs> I mean, because this yeah, it's so much exactly what you're talking about, your journey with it all is. Yes. I'm having a full blown identity crisis, Colleen. I swear I am. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, like, I have uh, friends who are astrologers too, and they're like, what? Because I have my sun and my rising are both Aquarius. Luckily, I have a Pisces moon to kind of settle me down a bit. <laughs> Water but, you down a little bit. <laughs> yes, a little bit. I'm like, ah, yeah, there's a squishy side to me. Um, but I, I really, truly, I do. That's what it feels like. It feels like everything of recent times that I have thought myself to be or what I thought mattered to me or what I was interested, everything is being turned upside down and inside out where I'm really like, I feel like I'm reconstructing and refocusing and something is changing. Something's erupting, but I'm going with it because again, of course I'm curious. Um, but that's why I told you too, like all of next week, I'll be in another, uh, form of energy healing training in March, the same, I will be in another. Um, and then it's becoming more very clear to me now what my personal relationship is to Reiki and how I want to share that and how I want to um, communicate that even in my classes. So uh, in the last couple of months in December and January, I taught an online class called the pulse of Reiki. And it was for people who are already level one, level two, but to go deeper into different aspects within the system to really kind of crack it open, examine and experiment as I love everything to be very experiential. And it was incredible because there were people from different lineages and different backgrounds and the conversations were amazing. So I'm, it's just becoming more clear for me the direction I'm going now and um, trying my best not to be afraid of all of these changes because, you know, especially when you get known for working in a certain direction or people become very familiar with you even on your podcast, it can kind of, even against your meaning to put you in a box or people see you in a certain way. So even that idea of like, well, things are going to start changing and being comfortable with that has been, um, I'm working on it. That's why I said, I'm working on this Pluto. <laughs> in Aquarius. Well, and, and it's been three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it feels like seriously, like everything is just, who knows what's happening. It's all changing. Well, it all, it went a little bit last year. So we did have the change a little bit last year, but it's now. Um, but anyway, well, what's, what I love about that, Yolanda, though, is like being authentic. We've been talking about authenticity a lot lately and kind of our different things that we're that we're doing and and being authentic about that is because I agree you kind of and maybe we even almost put our our like you there's this outside perception, which then maybe even influences our own perceptions at times and. Um, and, but what I love about what you're saying is that, but we all evolve and change. And mm -hmm. by being authentic about that process for 
ourselves, even if that is shifting like what the outside perception is, it gives other people the permission to do that. You know, it gives other people the, oh, if this person is evolving and changing, because hopefully we do, right? Right. (laughs) You know, hopefully we do. And if, if this person is doing that, that gives me permission to consider the things that I knew and honor those. And then yet what's on the horizon or I'm shifting because of this new perspective that I have, or yeah. I've been through this cycle or I'm going through a major transit and it's broadening things, shifting things, you know, crumbling yeah. some, broadening others, things like that, that it, it also, by being authentic and honest about that, I think that that is such an important, a a beautiful piece of it as well, because it does support other people in that process. And it's funny because we've actually heard this multiple times on this podcast Mm -hmm. with people of like saying kind of the same things of like, I'm in this transition period and I'm in this listening phase of it and seeing what's going to be born out of this and using my tools, learning new things And it's so a part of this, like it it so aligns with this astrological shift that we're having. That's so major um, that I think that that is really beautiful, you know, and it it also is inspiring for like others to be also authentic about, about that. Yeah. And to your point, I hope that exactly everything you said does encourage people to, you know, allow that because sometimes the interesting thing about this work, I notice a lot of people become very aware of when they're shifting and changing. Whereas mm-hmm. I think before you just may not have been consciously aware of the the change until something external happened. But people are hyper aware in this work of like, oh, something's changing, something's shifting. I'm going through a shift. We hear that a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And even if we don't know what it means or what it's leading to, we become so aware of like, something in me is changing like oh so my friends and I we do we joke about it like girl I'm going through a shift I don't know what's happening um but it's also you remind me of years ago when I did the podcast initially I want to say I did two to three years consecutive every week never missed a episode always showed up and then I was like I have nothing else to talk about so bye everybody this was fun adios and I stopped doing the podcast for a year. And I remember that. Yeah. I just yeah. dropped off. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know if anyone. Because, no, you know, I listen to your podcast too. So it's like, I remember when that happened. Yeah. But, just oh. the end. Yeah. But the thing was, is so many people around me in my life were like, oh my gosh, you can't do that. Like, what's going to happen if you do that? And I was like, I just, I genuinely don't have anything else to talk about. And at that time I wasn't doing interviews yet. And so I disappeared for a year. I trusted. I wasn't trying to force myself to stick with this thing out of fear. And then I started getting emails of people saying, where did you go? Are you coming back? I just found this show. Like, what are you doing? Right. And by the time a year had passed, I was like, you know what? Maybe I will come back. Maybe there are some new things because I took time to solely focus on myself. But then coming back, all of a sudden, I was getting all of these interview requests And I was like, what in the, am I on a list? Like what, (laughs) how do these people even find, right? So the podcast became something totally different and it wouldn't have happened. I don't think if I resisted the change that was happening for me personally, even though I didn't understand it. So with what you said, and even that, I hope it really does help people who may be in resistance to any change, no matter big or small, we never know what is changing for us and within us and what that may lead to. Well, for sure. And listening, I think to me is the biggest piece of it and taking the time to let that come in. Yeah. Are you in a place now where, you know, I know you, you had mentioned about, you know, talking about where Reiki, what Reiki is pointing towards. Is that also like, are you, do you have clarity? Are you in the place of, I just need to listen for a while? Or you said you're studying also. Yeah. 
Yes. So over the years, like I said, there has been several different um, philosophies and um, teachings that I have, I've dove in, I dove like full force into different practices, different systems. But initially I thought it was just this cool thing. I mean, it was almost like a magic trick in some weird way, you know, like Reiki, like, oh, this is weird. Like, feel this. Do you feel that? Do you feel, can you believe? It was just very magical to me. And then I went through a period where I was, although I was practicing on myself, I was more fascinated with the experience of working on other people. So it was very much an externalized experience for me, but I learned a lot through that. So in doing sessions for other people and observing just what happens in that and also the follow-up um, with working with people, I learned a lot with focusing on people's journeys as well. But then, you know, as it does, it circled back around and forced me to look at me. <laughs> That's where I had like the, you know, one of the tower moments. Um, and so it's constantly been this evolution of understanding and looking at the result of working with energy from different aspects, whether um, learning through observing other people, learning through my personal experience. And then at this point, I really, again, I'm, I'm just fascinated with what it means to be human and what it means to be in these bodies, but also what it means to not be separate from anything in existence. I love that. And so tied into that, like I also study things like hermeticism. And so I look for Reiki in everything I study. I look for how the system of Reiki helps me to understand whatever it is that I may study. And so there's this constant mirroring of Reiki helps me to understand other things and other things help me to understand Reiki. And so now um, I'm just continuing with the exploration of energy work just again, because I, I want to understand us. Like that's that's it. I just want to understand us. And hopefully, I mean, that's never going to end. You know how this goes. Right. it's going to be. Yeah. So hopefully even when I'm like 60, 70, I'll still be telling you, Colleen, I'm just exploring us. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> just a different version of it. I know. It's like, well, when you when you find out, let us yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we had talked a little bit about Natalie earlier, and I would on that episode that we had with her. I loved our conversation about that piece of it. You know that the just well the oneness with all of the things, right? I think so many of us kind of connect into that relatively easily, but yeah. what about the oneness even with ourselves? Yeah, and yeah. these bodies that yes. we are housed in, um, yes. but that there's not really. It's not even just a housed in; like it is also the divine. Yeah. So that kind of thing. So yeah, so I love that, Yolanda. That's really, really interesting. And and I agree that that is a one of those places that I find a lot of interest in as well as that key, mm -hmm. Ray key that yeah. also runs through everything. That there's nothing, Colleen, what were you saying in the last podcast? There's nothing in the universe that isn't Reiki, right? Mm -hmm. There's it is all, it is all. And nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, life like if you want to know what it is, look out the window. Look at your hand. It's yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's all things. But that's and it. It's so true. But it's it's one of those things again. I think it's interesting because we and that's where okay. Anyone who tells you if you take a class with me, I am like Inspector Gadget. I'm like we're gonna deconstruct it all. Right. That's what I really love. But there was a phase where. I was very into deconstructing even the terms that we commonly use, right? So even, but it was part of the curiosity. So when I first came into this work and heard so much about grounding and being in relationship to my body, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like I got it conceptually, but I didn't really get it, right? Mm -hmm. So I had to go really deep into the practice and really observe, well, what does this feel like? to even direct my mind to my breath and like have this inner um, connection to looking at feeling and sensing the movement of my organs and, you know, just connecting to my body in ways I would have never imagined, right? The observation of it all and the, then again, the sensory. 
then I started to recognize, oh, when I am so disconnected from body and my mind is over there and you guys, I bump into everything. Like I bump into cabinets, corners, doorknobs, everything. And Me so too. I started to <laughs> so have bruises everywhere. That's how out of body I would be. But I didn't understand because I was just used to functioning that way. So then when I started to recognize this is what it feels like to be present, to be in my body, I literally will even pay attention to the soles of my feet when I'm walking. It helps a little bit, Colleen, not 100%, but you know, it does. And so I started recognizing the contrast of, okay, when I'm in my body and I'm aware, what does that feel like? I feel sturdy. I'm tuned in. It's a total different experience of life. Like, I'm glad I get to really see both of you right now. Like, I'm really looking at you and I really am like enjoying the expressions that you are versus if I was sitting here on, on my phone and like, what I don't, I wouldn't take you in the same way. But the only way I could understand that was to really deconstruct it and really get myself into the practice that took me beyond the concept. So that's another thing I always encourage people to do. We say a lot of things and we have a lot of, um, I don't know, like spiritual taglines that sound good, but do you really sit with what it means and how you apply it and what the experience of these things may be? So yeah, I I love that part. I think that that is uh, a really good point. I do think that there can, you know, what we have to understand just as in everything in spiritual paths and spirituality, there is, you know, I have a love for all the things that people do and be, but there is, you know, those, these things that can just be flung around because it sounds spiritual. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, I, I like the idea of the, uh, you know, the concept of you talking about, and it, each of us are going to be drawn to whatever part of that we're drawn to, right. but really, you know, also being, uh, having the meaning for ourselves behind the things that we're saying. Yes. And I, I don't put, you know, anything that like, oh, this person needs to have meaning behind their saying what they're saying. It's only for us. Like, yes. do, am I using these terms just because they sound spiritual right. or am I using these terms because they, they mean something to me? And, you know, it's not a hundred percent of the time. Like mm-hmm. you, we all do, <laughs> like we're humans, like it's not perfect, but I also, I, I agree with you if like, kind of also understanding it for myself and yeah. that's going to be a process that's that's the same spiral that we have in healing that okay I'm going to understand it to one level right and then I'm going to go around the spiral and I'm going to understand it to a different level yes. and to another level and each of that is our our own path and um so it's not to say that like if I use the word grounding and I don't understand it to the full it's not that I can't say that word that's not what I mean it's just that it, it I I do agree with you that to like to have these things that it's our our own path to also understand them rather than yeah. just spiritual nomenclature. Yeah. You know? Well, this was the thing about it. I think it really hit me this leg of like wanting to deconstruct things when I put myself in the position to teach because I, it, it came with that whole wanting to be authentic, right? And this is why I always say to people, you know, take what I say, what resonates and like leave the rest or any of your teachers, right? I always say that. I'm like any of your teachers. But the reason I like to explore and to deconstruct and really apply it to ourselves is part of that authentic piece. Because if my teacher tells me anything and I understand and I can regurgitate it, Part of me, I may not feel like I'm being 100% honest if I feel like there's a part of me that doesn't really get it. Whereas if I say, I don't really get that. <laughs> yeah. Let me crack that yeah, open. Me I got I really good to add that. But yeah. The thing like, that Colleen taught me was so great. It was like, well, I don't know if it's a yeah. concept. I don't know. It's okay to say I don't know. Yes. I love I don't know. Because to me, that gets me excited of like, I'm about to find out. Like, I'm about to learn something else. Right. So I always tell people, like, have that lightness of like, it's okay not to know. But what if you did? 
what do you need to do to like play with this and experiment with this? And then, so when you ask me what I think about, say, meditation, oh, what I say to you is going to be 100% authentic based on what my experience is. And there's nothing for me to feel uncomfortable about in that because I can only tell you what's true for me based on what I allowed myself to be exposed to. And that's why, yeah, that's that's why I love it so much. And again, I love that we have different experiences because now I can learn from you, Robin. I can learn from you, Colleen. And we could be doing the same thing, but the difference in lens is going to make me go, oh, God, I never thought of it that way. Or that was in my experience. Like, how did you do that? Right? So this is another reason why too, I'm like, this stuff never ends. Like, just sit down, get comfortable because you're going to be here for a while. Like, <laughs> Don't practice this stuff forever. Well, and to know that what is going to interest you, you're going to pay attention to. So like just in the example, oh gosh, that term caught my attention. Yeah. Oh, I want to know more about that. But I don't have to know everything about everything. And I might not not going to be interested in everything about everything. And the perspectives, like you were saying, like and my perspective on grounding might be my understanding of it might be a little bit different. My practice of it is going to be a little bit different, but that's, that's the beauty of it, right? That's the, that's the depth of all of it. And that, and then, like you said, we can share ideas and talk about these things and like, Oh, how interesting that I never really equated because I love my, uh, one of my biggest grounding practices to go stand bare feet on the earth because of that electromagnetic Mm -hmm charge that we have as beings that everything on the planet has and energy and but I never had the thought that like oh the reason why maybe I run into so much stuff is because I'm not in in my (laughs) body as much as I should present in my body as much as I should be like I never thought of that perspective you know Mm -hmm. and how now that gives me a whole nother like oh interesting what can I explore about that or what can I listen to around that as Colleen was saying yeah And another thing I do with that is in conversation because I am, I'm a very, my mind is active. Everything you say is making me curious, you know, like I'm that person like, oh, wow. And then I go down a rabbit hole of 20 other thoughts and (laughs) being in podcasting, you have got to pay attention. Like people are like, well, how do you do interviews? I'm like, I pay attention. (laughs) That's it. I pay attention to what they're saying, but I realized to do that, I had to breathe into my lower abdomen, the hada, the sacral, whatever you want to call this area beneath the navel. I have to consciously breathe into that space when I'm conversing. Otherwise, I'm having 500 thoughts. It's all that and Aquarius. It's all that say, Aquarius. It's it, Aquarian is. Energy. <laughs> it is. It is. But it's oh, again no. one of those things you start to recognize yourself. And then these tools, the practices within the system, you see how they work for you. And so that's like one of the area, like grounding, I was resistant. Like even now I'm sitting with my legs mm-hmm. crossed. I never sit with my feet on the floor. I, uh, But I breathe into my lower dandian. I do. Um Yeah. So I think there's definitely something for all of us, but the beauty I love so much about community in this work is we get to learn from each other. And that's why I was really looking forward to this conversation with you all, because I've heard a lot about you too. And I've listened to your podcast too. And again, it's like, wow, it's cool. Different perspectives, different layers, different conversations with the same people even. So Yeah, I think we're lucky to be a part of a community that is expanding in so many ways. One of the things we've been sharing a lot about, um, and actually I see your pictures of uh, the Egyptian pictures hanging behind you, and I just got back from Egypt. And um, one of the things that came in there, and then also we've been really talking a lot about in our our different classes and things is listening for the questions we actually have to be able to even know what they are to begin with. And that a lot of the things that, for instance, people will ask us, it's like, but that's the question you have really hear the questions you have. Yeah. And uh, this is segment behind me. Oh, Yes. Yeah, and I was in uh, her temple with her in Egypt, and 
I was standing there kind of like, I'm, I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) What? Yeah. And that's what I heard was listen for the questions that you have that you don't know to ask. You don't even know you want to ask them. So listen for them. And that has been such an interesting um, journey because I also do the same thing you're talking about with some of the years long courses of study over a word or right. uh, we've been talking because we have a we're redoing our le- our website and um, my uh, our tagline all these years from way back when has been living the light of joy mm-hmm. and it, when I when we first I worked with my niece with that and I was like what does that mean? (laughs) (laughs) What? And even today, there's the new development or uh, one of the ones that I really deep dove into was judgment, Mm -hmm. like really understanding my judgments, because I also know, you know, it's, it's good to have good judgment. So not all judgment should be in the category of letting go of judgment, which led me then to opinions, which then and deconstructing these, like you say, over years of what does that mean to gratitude is the solution. And then listening is what gets you there. And so over all these years of that course of study and curiosity is so much fun and also sometimes um, can take us into the challenges of, all right, well, let's see if I am studying opinions. Yikes. I don't (laughs) recommend it. I do recommend it, but actually really asking for that to be gentle. That, that That was a rough deconstruction. Oh, I can imagine. You know, yeah, it was like, yeah. whoa, they were just rampant, man. They were everywhere and everything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to say, too, real quickly, with when you were talking about how we just use terms, one of the places that I really noticed that, I'm going to fix my focus here, um, that I really noticed that is in my writing. It's so easy to go into that kind of just spirit speak. And I'll go back and be like, I have no idea what I said. I think I just went there. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay, come back. What did I actually mean to say here? And let it, yeah, let it come in. So I have to say being on your newsletters, um, you do write beautifully. And I think one of the, and I remember even years ago when I used to get the Reiki Times magazine, you would have articles in there. And I think one of the things with it too, especially when we're sharing, sometimes <laughs> trusting that people are going to get it, like yeah. knowing they're going to get it, how they're going to get it. Because I will get stuck sometimes too and like, oh, how do I make sure this is really injustice? and understood and really clear and I'm like oh girl come on now they're gonna get it how they get it (laughs) but sometimes and it's perfect and it's the funniest thing sometimes you think this makes no sense and people think it's the best thing ever and then there's something you're so excited about and then it's like crickets you just never know (laughs) where information is gonna meet people but um yeah I really enjoy I've enjoyed your writings over the years in different spaces so yeah thank you it's been it's been because when I first started writing for Reiki News Magazine I had never written anything before yeah the first article because I made my living as a fiber artist before um, Reiki and the first article I wrote was knitting with Reiki Uh and you know I had I had zero idea. <laughs> I don't know. And, uh, and but that going back to that listening, but that is one of the places that I notice it. And like you say, some of it, you let it go. 
some of it is like, no, I need to actually go through every word that I just said and see what, what do I mean by this? And then also the part of like, oh, I am saying this in writing. (laughs) (laughs) Some of those, one of the first ones that I wrote, um, what was it? Uh, That's not the Reiki and Nature Spirits one. Must have been the Reiki and Nature Spirits one. And I was talking about in that how to talk to fairies. I remember remember your story about fairies. This was years ago. I can't even tell you what year. Um, You had come to San Diego and uh, I got to take a class with you. I resat one and two. I had done it prior. I think at that point, I had probably done a master level class too. But you came and I did one and two with you. Um, and you told a story about, I think it was your husband and you all went to like a fairy. Yes. Yes. And he was just so like, Oh, he was the one that had the experience. Um, yeah, I remember that was such an incredible story. God, all Mm. these things like Flash is coming back now. I I know. I'm just like, (laughs) Oh, I love it. The full circle. It does. It comes full circle. Well, one other question I have, and I know yeah. we've been talking a long time and we can keep talking, um, but you also created an app. Tell yes. us about that. I'm so curious. You know, it's funny. It's in it, listening to you right now too, it reminds me of how, you know, I told you before I thought I was introverted. And Reiki has shown me sometimes what's important to us is bigger than our fear, right? And so while, you know, putting myself out there in all kinds of ways was very scary to me and very uncomfortable, my desire to share Reiki and information with people or things that helped me was more important than the fear, right? And so it's like been baby steps of work with strangers, Ah, do the podcast, what? Like all these, you know, incrementally. But the one thing I just could, I still I'm not that great at is social media. I just, I'm, I, I mm. don't know. And then I think because by the time it became a big thing, I had already been podcasting. So I already had a way of connecting with people that I really, I don't know. I, I always say I'm going to figure it out, but I don't know. I have this weird aversion to social media. So I still wanted to share things with people in a way that was convenient and you could you know just look on your phone and it all be right there but not necessarily on Instagram <laughs> it's like I need a way to house this and make it all very easy you can get the oracle readings you can get reiki tips and tools you can watch the podcast you can do all the things in one space and so an app I was like well that's a good idea but again one of those things that I thought, how am I going to do that? I'm not a developer. Get out of here. And so it just so happened, like months had gone by and I saw an ad for this company that helps you to develop an app. And so I decided I want to do it um, just for the convenience again of people being able to access my work in one spot, whether it's the podcast or videos to support you with your practice or There are guided meditations on there. I do um, oracle readings by sign and then like just daily inspirations, all the things. And there's no other distraction around it. It's just like your little energetic alchemist space. Yeah. So (laughs) that's the name of the app. Um, It's available on Apple Store or Google Play for Androids. If you just put in the energetic alchemist, it'll pop up. You'll see my little face and you download it and uh, you just use your email address to register and it's free and there's all kinds of free content. And then there's a membership portion where you get more access to more stuff, but you get a lot in the free section as well. You're awesome. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Just like you, I like to share. That's all. Yeah, absolutely. 
That's super fun. You know, we always, we just got into talking. So it was, that was super fun. We didn't read your information. So I want to make sure right. people are able to do it. But, you know, I think that that was just, I mean, we both podcast all the time. Yeah. So it was like, all right, we're just going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the first thing is, is that uh, Yolanda Williams and um, it's, she's the energetic alchemist is uh, her website and the energetic And as mm -hmm. we've said, her podcast is Reiki radio. So you can find her podcast wherever you play what podcast, just search the Reiki radio or search Reiki radio and you'll find it. Um, she's got her Oracle deck. And so I would imagine pretty much everything they can find at your website, Yolanda. Yes. So yes, app, the Oracle deck, even connecting into your social media if they want. Yes. Um, all of that they can find uh, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come play. Will, come have conversations. <laughs> I want to read real quick. Uh, her Instagram is uh, Reiki Radio and her other things are actually uh T E A Reiki. So it's like kind of sounds T Reiki, but it's yeah. short for the energetic alchemist Reiki. Yes. Um, but as she said, she puts most things in her app. So I would uh, definitely encourage everybody to check that That's out. It's so funny because I read the T part of it <laughs> and I just thought, oh, here's the T about Reiki. <laughs> I know I, a lot of people think I'm talking about like the tea you drink. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's an acronym, well, but yeah. It's also being used of like, tell me the tea. Tell me the tea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so one of my like, sessions is called tea time and that's what, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love it. And it's the energetic alchemist. Yes. That makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and okay. do you have any upcoming classes, anything you want to tell people about? Um, well, in the summer, I am going to do open a Oracle school again. I did it when the class, when the deck first was launched. There's the book for it over there. I oh, taught yeah. a five month class, but it was Oracle cards and wellness coaching. I am not doing that again. <laughs> so this is just going to be um, basic intuition development and using the Oracle cards that will begin in the summer. And I also will be teaching Reiki in San Diego this fall. Um, aside from that, I have ongoing uh, classes online. I do Pulse of Reiki randomly. So, I mean, if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll know when I'm teaching what is the best way um, to know. And yeah, I mean, just, oh, one thing I do, it's uh, free for the community. On Tuesdays, I have a Reiki Radio Roundtable. It's later in the day, but um, it's just for people who want to come talk about the practice uh, some people like to talk about what came up on the episodes on Reiki Radio, but the link for that is on the app as well. So you can join me for conversations there. And what's that question. called again? Um, it's the Reiki Radio Roundtable, but the mm -hmm. link for it is in the app. Yeah. And that's on Tuesdays. In and the then how, how often are you uh, posting on your uh, podcast? So the podcast is weekly. It airs on Mondays. This well now when we're recording, um, I haven't posted in a couple of weeks because I've been training and doing some other things. Um, but by the time this airs, we'll be back for season eleven, I believe, eleven or twelve, one of those seasons. <laughs> no, yeah. So there'll be uh, some more new episodes launching very soon. So good, Reiki Radio. Yeah. Well, Yolanda. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to say or add? Just thank you so much. I mean, this is incredible. Again, it's a full circle moment being able to sit and be here with you again and finally meeting Robin. Um, I listened to you guys on the podcast too. So just very thankful to be here and glad that there are so many ways that people get to learn and expand their practice. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can reach Robin and I on ReikiLifestyle.com. Pretty much everything's under Reiki Lifestyle. Social is um, Robin's also Robin Vanelli Reiki. So on social. Anything else you want to add, Robin? No, nope, that's it. Just thank you okay. so much. What a fun, fun episode. It's really fun to sit Really down. fun. Yeah, thank you, you so much, Alonda. Thank you. And thank you for everything you do out there for the community and 
creating community and just, yeah, thank you. Thank you, my love. <laughs>